morning guys, Red Shadow here from River Valley Survival and Bushcraft. Got a few hides in the freezer from last year. We're going to bust out and do some raw hide and a uh, piece of buckskin with them. So uh, stick with us and check that out. How I learned how to tan hides was you know, I read a couple books, talked to a few people, and I took, took little parts of everything they told me, everything people told me, and everything I read, and put it together in my own way and found out what works best for me. So here's my method, guys. Hope you enjoy it. So what I've got here is just a, a deer hide that's frozen in a block. What I'll do is I'll get the deer hide off the deer. It's still got meat and fat on it, you know, and ticks and little parasites or whatnot. And what I'll do with the hide is go on and bring it to the house and take some, like, trash bags or something like that and just I'll ball the hide up in a ball, stick it in about two trash bags, and then I'll put it in this bowl here put it in the freezer and I'll just put it in this bowl here just to stop leakage into the freezer so the reason for freezing my hides is uh just killing the ticks mostly you know they carry Lyme disease and other stuff like that uh got three little dogs so just keep them safe keep everybody safe all right guys so our hide right here is done thawed out we're just gonna pull them out of the bucket hang them up here on the fence just to let them drip dry a little bit Set them just like that, let them hang out. First thing we're going to do is just scrape all this meat off right here. And the way I do that is I've got a regular old draw knife here. Got one flat side here on the, the bottom of our draw knife. And on the top side here we got a bevel or a, a bevel grind on it right there or whatnot. Normally you'd use a draw knife like this with the angled edge facing up towards you. But how I do it on my hides is I just turn my blade up 90 degrees with my flat edge facing away and I push with that flat edge like that. So I'll just lean up on my hide here, pinch it in between your beam and your body there, then I'll just start raking that layer off like that. You can see it coming off. I'm not putting a very large amount of pressure on this, just enough to get that that membrane right there pulled loose. Just main, mainly trying to get the fat, meat, and that little membrane layer. Which, that little membrane layer doesn't have to be completely removed just yet. And uh, we'll talk more about that a little later when we get to it. So I just do this right here. I like to try to kind of uh, kind of feather back on what I've already done, just kind of feather over it, and uh, I'll start up here at the neck, if you can see here on the neck, they got all these slice marks here, the skin is really close to the meat on the neck of a deer, so they have a hard time getting that off, well, that's how you can locate the neck there, and I'll just work it down the center like this from neck to tail, Keep going like that. I'll do a line straight down the center there, and then I'll come rotate and get the sides. Huh? We'll see that in a second. Just keep going with it here. So right here, it's wanting to get caught up on my sides. I'll just come here to my side, get that little bit loosened up there something like that when you're scraping you want to kind of try to keep your wrist and arms locked where your blade doesn't twist and turn like that. You know, going straight down, keeping it locked. If you don't, you could slip, and that'll cut through your hide like that. So just be careful with it. When I first started doing this stuff, I probably messed up about six, seven hides before I even got the hang of it. So. Don't be scared to mess it up or experiment with it.
kind of messy, but when you're finished, the product you'll have will look really nice. So, just gonna keep going on with it here. Try to keep your blade cleaned off there. It just makes the scraping a little easier. Alright, right here when I'm getting to the edge of my hide here, I just take it and just run it right off the side of the hide. Just no big deal. Right off the edge. And just like that. See? No big deal. Alright, we've made it down the center of our hide pretty much. What I'll do is just come here to one of the sides, come down the middle, and you have the sides of your deer here. And just come onto the side, get it exposed and set up nice like. And just start working around it like that. Run it right off the edge there. Still going with our sides here. Get as much off as you can while you're at that spot. And that's what I'll do guys, just keep going around my hide like that. glove on right here. I got a pretty good cut on my finger. So if you have cuts or anything like that, exposed wounds, open wounds, I want to be careful with this stuff. Uh, when I first started, you know, I didn't know any better. Come out here and get real nasty in it. Little dead animal parts, you know. With an open wound, and it uh, went septic on me. I had purple lines going up my few purple lines just going up and that's happened to me twice so I try not to mess with this stuff if I got any open wounds and if I do I should wrap it up kind of good so something else to watch out for right there So we'll keep going on with this, get right back with you. Alright guys, still scraping our hide down here. You're not going to be able to tell on camera, but you'll think you have all of your layer off there. But there's going to be a little, little thin film under it right there. And I can see it right here. I'm going to try to see if I can get it to scrape up and show it to you. See all them little strands and stuff right there? All that, that's that little membrane layer there. You're going to want to try to get a lot of that off. Like I said, all of it is not necessary at this point. It's just the majority. But like I said, I like to feather back over my hide. If I've gone through a spot, if I start in a new spot, I'll kind of feather back over to where I've already been. Just kind of helps out, I guess, getting off that membrane there. I just keep going around it. Little blood stains like this here. I like to go over them a good bit of times. Kind of squeegees out or squeezes out that 
soaked, that blood soaked spot there kind of squeezes it out where it ain't so dark. But uh, these blood spots will kind of wash out if you take your time with it. Get it, get it down a little closer to being your actual buckskin and it kind of rinses out if you take your time with it a little bit. Alright guys, we've scraped our hide down best it's going to get right now. And what I'll do is come back and lay it out, hair down. Right here I just got a old cooler full of hardwood ash. I get this stuff from barbecue shacks. They just throw it away so I go get it for free. So what I'll do is just come here to my hide and just sprinkle over it just a thin layer. And the reason I do that Alright, so we're going to take this hide and put it in a bucket of hardwood ash and water. And that's going to make the hair slip off. But, uh, you know, I do this right here because before in the past I've stuck my hide in and pulled it out a couple days later. And the two flesh sides, or the flesh side wants to stick to itself. And it doesn't want to get none of that lie, that lie in it. So, I'll just do this to make sure it's got a coat on it right here and don't stick to itself. hardwood ash from the barbecue shack and I'll just take a five gallon bucket just try to get a good shovel full everything's wet right now just try to get a good shovel full's worth in your bucket that's what I go with you know, about six good handfuls or so Fill it up with water, kind of get it mixed in a little bit, you know. Stir it around a little bit. This is a weak light solution here. So, I mean, unless you have super, super sensitive skin, it shouldn't bother you. I mean, you can always wear protective stuff, but, I mean, it, it seems not to bother me, so. Anyway, we'll just take a hide. I like to start and grab my hide here from the tail end so the hair grains are facing up. And I'll just come here to my bucket, dip it in, get it in there, and I'll pull it up like this and just do this. Just do that a few times there. And I'll just come back and make sure all the flesh side of my hide here is coated and not sticking to itself. It wants to stick to itself sometimes. That's the reason we laid it out and sprinkled ash on it in the first place. So, just double checking here, all my edges. Looking pretty good so far. Alright, I think we can live with that there. And I'll come back and just put a rock or something on that just to hold the hide under the liquid. Come out, come out every day or so and just stir it a little bit, you know, maybe twice a day. So that's how I do that, guys. We'll leave that there for three days. And we'll come out on each day and grab a piece of hair like this and see if it'll slip out really easy, which this is not doing a whole lot. I mean, it is a little bit, but once it soaks for three days, this stuff will just wipe off, so that's what we're going to do there, guys. But that's it. Come out and stir it once or twice a day. Check it. We'll get back with you when we got some hair slipping.